Hi folks, this is Jay. We are now on Garden Walk Buffalo, visiting a spectacular garden on West Ferry Street in Amwood Village in the city of Buffalo. So we are with the gardener, Fran, and uh, with uh, two of her daughters. They all, all, all three of them work in this garden. Say mm -hmm. a quick hi to us, Fran. Hi, I'm Fran, and I hope you all come and visit. Love to yeah. see you. Yeah, well, that's lovely. So, Frank, can, uh, can we take a walk in your garden? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Over here. Yeah. This is a stunning garden, and uh, we see color at every turn. And uh, you have quite a collection of hydrangeas and different variety yes. of hydrangea. Uh -huh. The microphylla, you have the mop hat, and also the lace cap. And also you have the paniculata uh, in the back which is more cold hardy. Yeah, so you do have a passion for the hydrangeas. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then we have acanthus. Yeah. 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 Look at the color. They're right. just stunning. So the hydrangea, they can, they can turn out to be so many different shades of uh, blue, purple, pink, and the red. Just look at this display. <laughs> and this is quite a large garden and this used to be a separate lot mm -hmm. and you added onto your property right. and you, you expanded the garden o over time. We've yeah. been in Garden Walk since the second year of its inception. Okay, so next year will be the 30th yes. anniversary for Garden Walk Buffalo. Right. So you have been on the walk uh -huh. for 28 years. years right. Wow. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for your support. It it's really is an honor to have you on the garden walk. Oh. Yeah, with such a such oh, a you. special garden. Yeah. So, uh, which way do you? Well, let's see. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's take a look at the turtle. So that's the turtle oh, that's you mentioned. Turtle. Yeah. yeah. See, it's some leftover wood. Yeah. So in this garden, not only we have a vast, vast collection of different plants. We also have garden arts that uh, are actually made from wood, yes. from, I mean, the trees grow <coughs> in oh, yes. this particular garden. Yeah, this is very special. Oh, so this you. is a more shaded garden, like yes. a woodland garden area. Uh -huh. We have different variety of hostas and hydrangeas. And acanthus. And Oh yes, the the bears breaches. Mm -hmm. uh, That's right. Is that a, a <coughs> rhododendron? Yes. Oh yeah, lovely. And you have some holly in the background. Right. Yeah. So you see, a good garden, you need to have layer. You you need to have evergreen to provide the foundation. Then use different perennial, annuals or flowering shrub to add color and texture. And you have to have one plant on top of the other so you don't have to weed so oh, much. <laughs> that is a very good strategy. Yeah, so plant them close to each other. Not only you have a very full garden, it reduces the chance of weed from germinating. And ultimately, you don't have to spend all days weeding your bed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's make a shortcut through this woodland garden. What? What? This is just stunning. So now we are approaching a patio area. There's another uh, wooden sculpture made from wood that uh, come from a, a tree that used to be grown in this garden. This is Mother Teresa. Uh, In addition to the huge collection of uh, hydrangeas, we do see quite a collection of uh, lily and a day lily. So you see this one really stands out and uh, we can enjoy, actually smell the fragrant, the aroma from the lily while standing on this patio area. Yeah. So do you have a count of the a uh, variety of lily or daylily in your garden. Well, daylilies uh -huh. are, are many, but uh -huh. that's an oriental lily okay. and uh -huh. <laughs> got that at Plantasia. Plantasia, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you, yeah, it's... Plantasia is quite a fun event. You can find some quite interesting yes. and good mm -hmm. items through it that you normally wouldn't be able Maybe to find at I'd any garden like. center. Yeah, so let's walk through. Um, 
Which, wherever you want. Yeah, okay. So uh, there is a stunning, stunning garden behind the house, actually between the building and uh, the garage. And uh, in a second, I will show you. The color is just unbelievable. And uh, because of the fragrant plants being utilized in this garden, you have to come here in person to fully appreciate its beauty. You get different enjoyment from different sensory. So you see, there are so many uh, lilies. They're all fragrant, very, very fragrant. And also there are flocks in other area of the garden, which is also quite fragrant. Look at this uh, uh, <coughs> patch of uh, mixed border. We have the hydrangea paniculata in the back as the backbone. Then we have a climber. Uh, so that is a clematis already uh, span, yes. right? So that's a clematis. Mm -hmm. And then we have the taller lily, then the shorter lily and daylilies. And with phlox roses, cleome, and uh, uh, rubecchia mixed in between. Look at the color. It is very, very fragrant where I am standing. This is a very, very colorful garden. Not only from the, the color, uh, it's coming from not only the bloom, it also comes from the, the foliage of different plants. For example, the purple, let me try to show people, show viewer, the purple uh, heuchera and also the yellow, orange heuchera, they provide color even without having to uh, flower. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And we do see quite a few of very, very beautiful classical style garden statuary uh, uh, placed at different uh, areas in this garden. And uh, it, just, it is just a very, very elegant <coughs> display. Now we are walking towards the the back of the house, where there's a area of the garden which is quite formal. We have the boxwood hedge in the center. Uh, I believe this is some type of uh, iris uh, growing in this kind of a boggy uh, situation at the end of the stream or pond. This is a stunning mixed border. Again, with the evergreen in the back, provide like a backdrop. Then with the taller uh, perennial, this is the Joe Pie weed. And also this is the Rose of Sharon. Then with the lower perennial and annual in the front, mm -hmm. even with the uh, begonia planted in the border. Uh, at the very front of the border, providing color throughout the summer. Okay. And while standing at this uh, uh, box area, we can take a long view of the entire uh, garden. We have an urn in the center of this long area with statuary uh, strategically placed in the middle of the border, creating a focal point, more than a few focal points. So, Fran, what kind of style do you think your garden uh, is? How do you describe your garden? I have no idea. <laughs> no? Okay. No, I didn't plan anything. We just keep planting. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, 
I yeah, I mean, from lots my, of color. Lots yes. of color. Lots of color. And, yeah, from my perspective, it's almost look like a French style garden. Mm -hmm. You have so many color, and uh, you have those very classical elements like the urn or the statuary, and uh, um, but. Uh, uh, everything is contained, but also has this free-flowing uh, structure. So you have the clean ash, which, which defines the garden. Mm -hmm. But within the border, uh, you use very bold color and uh, you use them in a very free way. So it's not like a very formal garden, but you do have yeah. some formal element mm -hmm. and uh, the formal structure. And we do have bunnies. You can see they chew. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just out, too. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Eyeballing us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's take a look at this side of the garden. Well, uh, it is very colorful. And if we take a closer look, you will see the color coming from the coleus and also the impatiens. Uh, oftentimes, people use coleus in a container but as Fran told us, it is actually quite adaptable to this kind of uh, uh, situation. They grow very well in ground. Yes. And they are very low maintenance. They provide color throughout the summer. You don't need to do too much at all. No. no. Yeah. And the Fran told me this is her favorite <laughs> sign in the yes. garden. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You've got this to get a, him singing yeah. this. This is part of the lyrics. Yeah. <laughs> yes, uh-huh. Yes. Yeah, such a beautiful song. So let's walk, uh, walk towards the deeper end of the garden. Again, this is a perfect example of mixed border with evergreen in the back and the uh, uh, shrub, smaller shrub. Mm -hmm. For example, this is a service berry. This is a, this is a burning bush, right? Yes. This is a burning bush. So they stay between the background and the foreground. Then we have those smaller perennial mm -hmm. uh, in front of them. This is a type of marrow with the pale pink flower and with the, the, the white flowering uh, taller perennial as a type of phlox. It hasn't quite started here yet. Yeah, well that's the temporal beauty of the garden. <laughs> it's ever changing, so it's, I mean, it does not stay the same uh, even no. for a week. So mm -hmm. that's part of the joy, I would say, yeah. Friend, tell me a little bit of, about the idea or story behind this particular statue here. The what? Oh, the statue? Yes. Uh -huh. um, what is the story? We, uh -huh. My husband loved it, and we saw it, uh -huh. and we bought it, and then yeah. we built mm -hmm. around it. Yeah. Uh -huh. and so it's three uh, children. Jordan, and they're with... looking at a bug on a oh, stick. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. and so it's about nature. and It's how... about nature, uh -huh. yes. Uh -huh. And the joy of being outdoor, enjoying the outdoor. Right. It's particularly, we want to cultivate this kind of enjoyment in the younger generation. Right. So come to visit uh, friends' garden during Garden oh. Walk Buffalo and bring the bring kids. Bring the kids, yes, yes definitely. absolutely. Definitely. And uh, so we all know uh, in Buffalo area, the winter can be quite brutal. So the past winter, we had more than one. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, more than one or two ice storm or snowstorm. So in France Garden, there was quite a quite a bit of a damage, particularly on the evergreen, the abovites. So uh, tell us a little bit about how you I, handle how you handle the winter damage in your garden. Well, mm. it didn't get picked up till spring, so that uh -huh. made it even worse, I think. Yeah. But uh, we got some small replacements. Uh -huh. That's what the size they all were. Yeah. We didn't uh -huh. even need a fence there. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. And uh, so yeah. some of them are still yeah. standing, yeah. damaged, yeah. and this is a whole new plot that we yeah. just did. So I had the similar experience. I have a row of abovites, very beautiful abovites between me and my neighbor. Mm -hmm. And the wind from the west actually blow a few of them over, yes. toppled. 
and uh, so there's a gap in between. So what I did is I placed uh, like a bird bath in that empty space rather than uh, seeing it as a void. Mm -hmm. So we so so we uh, utilize the space, put, put, put something there to, to to serve as a focal point. So you so you no longer see that as a failure or shortcoming. So yeah, that would be my strategy and. Uh, uh, so we all have to deal with the winter damage, yeah. And uh, but that's the, that's what we gotta have to <laughs> have to deal with to uh, to how do I say this to to be prepared for the uncertainty yeah. of life and always find the bright side. Yeah, I see this as an opportunity to try something new. Yes. Oh, look at this area. It, it is extremely fragrant because we have the flocks and we have the different variety of lilies. Mm -hmm. the, the fragrance is just intoxicating. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody help that man. <laughs> <laughs> look at the color. You can find uh, every shade, every color in the rainbow here, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> This is spectacular. Do you want to go down here or yes. do you think it's enough? Uh, yeah, let's walk through again because right. this is just so lovely. It's a very romantic garden. That's the other word I would use to describe. Okay. Yeah. So, it, so you have the fragrance, you have the color, you have the lyrics, which all <laughs> evokes emotions. Yes. So I see this as, as a very romantic garden. <laughs> oh, that's nice. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Look at the lily. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so when people plant lily, don't plant them just by themselves. Let, let the lily mingle with other Others. flowering right. plants so they, they, they really stand out and bring everything together. Mm -hmm. And you get to enjoy the fragrance too. So do we want to go behind the grot, sure. show people what you have there, the right. really one of the plants that you wouldn't expect us to grow in the ground in Western New York. Look at the lace cap on the quick fire hydrangea. They are about to go into full bloom. So this, so now we are at the area behind the garage. Mm -hmm. This is a viburnum, right? Yes. Uh -huh. Because I see the, the berry, viburnum, and. Uh, and you can see more damage over here. Oh, I'll show people really Look, quickly. We lost. Yeah. Uh -huh. And there's a new little one between these two big ones. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. It was solid. Yeah. Uh -huh. It was very nice in yeah. its day. Uh -huh. Yeah, I see what you mean. So for the evergreen, especially the, the, the abovitis, once they get large, once they suffer some damage, there isn't much you can do with them no. other, than re other than replacing a section. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, but uh, they're a very important aspect of the garden. Not only they provide the backbone for the garden, the, bir yes. the birds use them as a uh, sanctu sanctuary during the winter mm -hmm. to protect not only from the element, but, but also from the prey, uh, uh, not prey, from the predator, I mean the hawk. Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. So in, in this area, the first thing I notice is the uh, white color being utilized uh, in, a more, in a very symmetrical way. So the, so the white color, they will really pop out after the sun sets and uh, you can really notice them. And, uh, uh, at the very corner of this garden, I see a fig, and a friend told me the fig live at the spot year round, yes. so it's not something I need to be bring inside. It's been out for many years. Many years, mm -hmm. okay. and you do occasionally harvest the fig oh, from it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And right next to the fig, I see a very, very tall vagila plant. This must be eight, ten feet tall. Yeah, and. Uh, uh, as I was told, this Virgilia has been here for 
many years. It's a gift from a friend, right. and apparently it's very happy here. <laughs> yeah. So can we take the shortcut sure. behind the garage, and uh, then we can see the totem pole. Uh, and there's a very very nice story behind the behind the totem pole. Yeah. Okay. So this is like a secret passage, only uh, very few people know. So we take the shortcut behind the garage and enter to the garden uh, uh, on the other side of the patio. So this is the totem pole in the garden, and uh, this is actually, it used to be the trunk of a fir, fir yeah, a, a pine tree, a pine tree right. years ago. When the tree uh, come to its end, so you find the artist or craftsman right. and carve a totem pole out of the uh, trunk. Right. Yeah, and mm -hmm. uh, so what's the meaning behind this? Uh, Oh, uh. <laughs> it was, the artist's name was Michael Kelly, mm -hmm. and uh, whatever he wanted to do, he would say, how would you like a totem pole? And we'd say, sure. Yeah. <laughs> and he did Mother uh, Teresa over uh, there, and he did uh -huh, the Pope, uh -huh. and he did the big turtle in the other garden. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, it was all his doing. We've lost track of Michael. Uh -huh. We don't know what happened to him. Okay. He used yeah. to come every uh -huh. year and uh -huh. see if things needed touching uh -huh. up, and you can see uh -huh. he wasn't here. <laughs> yeah. Maybe the video can help to bring him back <laughs> to the yes. garden and, uh, uh, and have a little reunion. So this is such a, a lovely way to how do I say this? So you have the tree. I mean, unfortunately, everything has a lifespan, even right. the big tree. Mm -hmm. So at the, at the end of the lifespan, how do you uh, handle it? Do you just cut it down, take it away, or you keep it in the garden and uh, make, make something extra nice and the meaningful out of it, giving it a second life in your garden? Yeah, this is a very, very good uh, way to... Uh, to bring a bring character to your garden. This is truly unique. Yeah. Very lovely. Yeah, so again we are visiting a garden on Garden Walk Buffalo on West Ferry Street in the city of Buffalo uh, with the gardener friend and uh, two of her daughter Jane and uh, Lane. So all three of them will be here during Garden Walk Buffalo. And, uh, uh, visit and say hi to Fran, Ling, and Jane. Well, thank you for sharing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for My coming. My pleasure.